question is, uh, uh, there are two debates scheduled with you and uh, Johnny D. Chuck on uh, May 6th and 7th, I believe, the league on the 6th and the channel 34 on the 7th. John has uh, said that he has uh, uh, asked you for uh, additional debates. You just want to tell us why uh, you said, I think, uh, that we quoted you that, that you felt that two was enough for, for the voters to... Uh, to uh, well, one... Uh, why, why not more? Well, one, I think two is enough. Um, between my mayoral duties, which I've not neglected, uh, my campaign obligations, uh, going out and meeting people every night of the week, traveling the, traveling the district, and my family obligations. Um, quite honestly, I don't know what nights his schedule or my schedule would have permitted to do the 15 debates that he challenged me to. Um, the public perception I got is that two were sufficient and that people want to go out and talk to me face to face. Let's face it, on the the 6th and the 7th, I will not be available those nights because I'll be preparing to go to that debate, um, which means that takes me out of the neighborhoods. The neighbor, the people, the residents, the voters of this district, district, they want to meet with you. They want to sit down and talk with you. They want to sit and have a cup of coffee with you. And that's what I've been doing for the last 60 days is going out into the district, sitting with large groups of people, meeting with them, meeting in their homes, talking to them about our problems. Um, I know what the issues are. He knows what the issues are. He's been part of the problem t for 12 years in Harrisburg. I mean, he's been there for 12 years. I'm going to go down and straighten the problems out that have occurred over the last 12 years. Do you think there's value to, to the debates? Do you think there's value to the debate? I mean, if it's more valuable to go and talk to the people in the neighborhood, the debates why, why, do the two, why do the two debates at all? Well, um, the legal women sit. The League of Women Voters had requested one, and I answered that yes, and the uh, WVIA said they requested one. Out of respect to both of those um, organizations, I was willing to go and, and the, do the debates for those uh, two groups. Um, I, I'm not looking to get out of debates. It just, again, it was a, a schedule, uh, a timing schedule. I mean, to, to do that many debates, I don't know how we would even schedule it. Uh, you mentioned that uh, John Bibichek was part of the problem in Harrisburg. Can you expand on that? Well, he, he's been there for 12 years, and obviously the state has some serious problems that they're faced with. Um, I want to I want to go down and be part of the solution to those problems. You can be specific about how he was a part of the problem? Well, again, I mean, um, what has he accomplished in his 12 years down there? I mean, he says that he's done A, B, C, D, and E. But if you ask the typical person on the street, um, they're not so sure what he did. Um, and I believe that, you know, that that's, I, I believe through my leadership I've accomplished some things here in the city of Wilkes-Barre um, by uh, putting my political future on the line and uh, doing what is right. And I, I believe I'll go down to Harrisburg and, and uh, make decisions that ultimately will be for the best issue of the Commonwealth. Did he accomplish anything for the city of Wilkes-Barre this time? No. Did he? No, I, I would, my, uh, we dealt with um, Eddie Day and Kevin Blom and Senator Musto. Is uh, getting an endorsement from the Luzerne County Democratic Committee, is that something that's important to you? They chose not to endorse. They will not. They're not endorsing anybody. Are there other questions from the group? Is there anything that we didn't ask you, Mayor, that's particularly important for you to mention? Anything that you want well, to get out there, there? there's one thing yeah, I would like to mention. In fact, the matter is, um, I, I have not seen it, but I've heard that um, one of his TV ads indicates that he um, he indicates that I've given myself a pay raise over, over the years that I've been the mayor, when in fact that's not true. I've frozen my salary. I have not received a salary increase. In fact, under my administration, we I negotiated a copay for health care for all the unions. I'm actually making less money now. I make less money each year because the health care goes up. So as each year the health care goes up, my salary goes down. Um, when I took office, the former mayors had city-owned cars. I, did, I took the city-owned car away. I, did not drive a, I do not drive a city-owned car. So if you take an average of a $400 a month car payment, and you multiply that by 12 months times the eight years I'd be there, that's roughly 40 or 40 some thousand dollars a year. I also eliminated um, car allowances when I became the mayor. I've made those decisions, on, but you know I didn't call the press up and had cameras there saying Tom Layton's taking a pay for you. I did it because I had to show that I, I had to prove by leadership, do what's right, uh, make the example. I took the pay freeze. Nobody forced me to do that. I did it on my own because I had to lead by example. I don't drive a city-owned car. Um, 
So these are just a few things that uh, he's misrepresenting out there in the area. But Tom Layton never gave himself a raise. Tom Layton is making less money today than he did in, uh, in the past. Are you concerned about the tone of this campaign, that it might distract from some of the more important issues? It, it seems like there's already a lot of back and forth. I believe I'm going to run on the issues. I have a very strong platform on what I've accomplished as the mayor. But again, it's not what I've accomplished as the mayor. And I'm, for those that know me, I don't like to talk about the past. I want to talk about the current and the future. I want to talk about what I could bring to Harrisburg to make this district a better district.